Hi, today I want to quickly walk you through an example I um, just recently extracted from a couple of customer projects where I used Spring Boot, um, where I used um, AMQP, REST, um, have that all as a microservice which can, which can be easily deployed to the cloud, for example, to Pivotal um, web services. Um, the example is available on GitHub. Um, what I did there is to have a very simple order process, so it's an order fulfillment, could be one order fulfillment microservice. It doesn't do anything, it just calls other services uh, in order to, to do the work. Um, I created a REST endpoint using um, Spring REST, um, basically, or Spring MDC, um, to start, to kick it off. Then um, the Komunda engine starts a new uh, workflow instance, um, the first thing it does, it, it calls another REST service in order to do the payment. It's basically from the URL, it's kind of a Stripe um, service, but I um, deployed the REST service myself, so I don't have any dependencies on external things. Um, that when this succeeds, the next thing that happens is that I send an AMQP message to RabbitMQ, in this case, um, in order to ship the goods. Um, then some external shipping service should pick it up, get a response back, um, which I don't do, so I basically have an AMQP listener listening to Rabbit for the exact uh, message I sent to Rabbit in the first place. So this is also my, it's directly my response message, um, which then is correlated back to my um, waiting workflow instance. So this moves on and then this will wait for five minutes. So you can still see the um, workflow instance hanging around in the end. And that's the basic idea. If we um, jump to the code, um, you, you can see that the first thing we have the BPMN file within there. So that's exactly what you what you just saw. Um, it's connected um, to a couple of spring beans. So for example, in order to retrieve the payment, I attached a spring bean. In order to send the message to MQP, I attached a spring bean. Um, and these spring beans are defined in the code. So the first thing is like retrieve payment. That's a spring bean. It uses the Spring REST template, so if you're using Spring, you know that, so I don't go into details of that. I use some configuration properties uh, in order to get the endpoint, and then um, what I do is I just do the REST request in here. So that's nothing very special. The same thing goes for MQP, and the basic idea again, um, in this case, we are using the Rabbit template from Spring um, in order to send the message to Rabbit. So um, the key message is here, um, we're attaching Java code, Spring Beans, and there we are using plain Spring, what you would do um, if you send a message yourself as well. Um, and the same goes for um, the, the um, inbound channel. So in order to provide the REST API to start a new order process, I just um, write a new, or wrote a new REST controller um, where you can place the order and that basically, in the background, just starts a new process instance or workflow instance in the Camunda engine and hands over a couple of data. We call that variables. Next thing for AMQP, the same thing. So whenever I get a message in some, some queue with an exchange and, and um, key and these kind of things, you know, from RabbitMQ, um, I just correlate um, back to my um, running workflow instance um, based on a process variable. In this case, I just use the order ID, I pass it around. So that's, the idea is not that this is realistic, but that you can um, see um, how it's working technically. So that's basically it. Then um, I'm using Spring Boot, so I have a Spring Boot application starting it all up. And I have obviously a couple of maiden dependency making that possible, so you can check that yourself. The cool thing, um, which I want to go into um, at the very beginning, is the testing. Um, because what we can do in that setup is um, we're using also Spring Boot in order to run the tests um, without starting any web environment, um, providing like own properties um, for, for that um, yeah, REST API and these kind of things. So a lot of things you can do in Spring in order to make testing nice. Um, Kamunda hooks in the testing as well, so we um, can specify that for these tests we want to deploy this BPMN process. And then um, we again have the Rabbit template, the REST template, so this is normal Spring. Um, 
But we also have something, it's called the process scenario. These are scenario tests um, from Kamunda, which we set up here. I don't go into all the details. Um, but the interesting part is here. So what we do is um, I start a new process. And the interesting part is what I do here is not really starting it yet, but I define what happens when I start it later on. So I define the whole scenario, what happens at a certain point in time up front, it's a bit like mocking here. So I say whenever I start it, I do that by calling the REST controller. That's also interesting. So I'm not using Kamunda API, but I use the API, which is used later on from the real system as well, because in there you might do data mapping or, or whatever it is. And it makes much more sense to use that method to start your process in the background than to use the Kamunda API and miss most of the stuff there. Um, the next thing is to, I, I do is I use Spring again and say, okay, whenever um, this process is started, I expect a request to happen, a REST request to that URL. So again, um, the interesting part here is I test or I, I, I assert in the test that the um, influence on the on the of the impact on the outside of my process application is correct. So I don't test that I step to the right activities in my my workflow, but I, I uh, test or I assert that the um, the REST API was really called. So I, I had a put on that URL with a certain um, data attached, and then I can um, basically um, also say what what I want to have as a response in order to move on in the process. Same goes for um, the process itself. So I can specify whenever the process waits at a certain receive task. So that's the thing where we wait for the response message. Um, we can um, specify that now we simulate that the MQP message comes in. And again, we are not using Kamuna API. We could do that as well, but it's more realistic to really to simulate the, the incoming message, doing the data mapping, doing the correlation, and see if that works correctly. And same thing for the timer. So we don't want to wait five minutes in our unit test. So we can specify whenever we arrive at the timer, we, we um, basically simulate waiting for, um, in this case, 10 minutes. So whenever we define everything, we can, we can get going. And that's the moment where the workflow instance is really kicked off, where everything happens and the process basically runs through. Um, afterwards, I will check that um, everything happened in my REST server as I expected. I can do some assertions, for example, that in my process instance, there was a variable um, with a payment transaction ID or a shipment ID. So basically, all this data was correctly copied to my workflow instance. I can check that the message in Rabbit arrived one time and um, to the right, sorry, to the right exchange um, with the right arguments, so the right data was sent in the message, and so on and so on. I can also verify that the process has finished. So that's pretty cool, actually, because there um, you can write um, really, really good test cases without going into the details of, of the model. So if I, for example, if I move the timer to the very beginning, it wouldn't change my test case because the, the outside is not impacted at the moment because I don't make any assertions on the timing here. Um, so now I can start up with Spring Boot. Um, it runs my test case and it's green. So that's pretty cool. Um, what we use here, by the way, we use the, all the auto wiring from Spring Boot. So we're using an in memory H2 database um, um, per default. And I can do exactly the same thing now running a real Spring Boot application. Um, Now I have to make sure to run Rabbit in the background because it now want I want to connect to a Rabbit broker. Um, in my test case, I mocked that away basically. You can see that. Um, yeah, we don't go into that detail. Um, you can sneak around in the code anyway. So whenever um, this is started, it's exactly the same Spring Boot environment. Um, I can go to um, localhost 8080 and I will see a Kamunda instance um, running. Um, that's pretty good. I can sign in and so on and so on. So um, this would work as well. But the um, next thing I want to show you, and that's um, pretty cool actually, um, there's the cloud connectors from Spring. I um, included a dependency in my Spring Boot application. And what it does is whenever I deploy that to a cloud provider, they basically support a couple of them. 
um, they recognize, oh, they're, I'm running in the cloud, and they also uh, recognize, oh, I have a data source, um, uh, only one data source which I need, um, which I get from the cloud, because there might be a cloud service with a MySQL Postgre or whatever, and then they connect that, they wire that automatically without me um, having to um, configure anything. And that's actually pretty cool. And in order to do that, what I have locally, um, or, or what I have prepared is I have a Cloud Foundry, a Pivotal um, Web Services um, account. So um, there I have two services already set up, one for AMQP, one for um, SQL, so Postgre basically. And I actually had um, a deployment already done because I, um, I wanted to check that, which I will delete again. So um, now I don't have that application running anywhere. Um, but I can easily um, deploy it because if I go to my um, application, there's a manifest file where I can define, okay, I wanna, wanna have this application named, I, I, know I need some memory, um, and I wanna, wanna bind it to uh, a couple of services like MQP and the database. Whenever I have that manifest file, I can just, um, Basically, I do a maven um, clean install. I don't need that, I already did that. And then I can do a Cloud Foundry push for that um, Uber file, um, Uber jar, which was created by Spring Boot. And now it's basically um, setting everything up. So it found the service, the MQP and the um, database. Um, now it starts everything, which also takes a little while. It, gets actually much faster if you just update the service, it will start it up, which can take a while. Um, we can, in the meanwhile, we can go back to our Pivotal console. We should see the application actually, so the application is there. Um, it's currently starting, and it says started, which is actually also pretty good. So it was started. Um, we can also do um, or see the logs a lot of things happening. Um, what we can do is um, we can see the route. So that's the URL it's now bound to. If I open that, I get to the Camona welcome page, um, which the first time takes a bit because it has to warm up the Tomcat in the background. Um, I can log in. The default is always demo demo. And then I can go, for example, to cockpit cockpit is our monitoring application and I can see what's happening in there. Um, so there should be um, not, not much. So I can see, okay, there's my um, order process, which is kind of um, makes sense. Ah, yeah, and I have old data actually um, from early on because I um, deleted the service, but I haven't deleted the database, so it's still there. Um, but anyway, and the next thing I can do is I can use my REST API in order to um, Use the URL from here, slash order, that's where I bound it to, order ID amount, and then I can fire it up, so we can say order ID 999. Um, then I send it, I should get an okay, yeah, that's perfectly fine. I can refresh the cockpit and I can see that this um, was happening. I think if you pay Pivotal, it might get a bit faster. <laughs> I have the free tier at the moment. so. Um, this is it. So that's my process instance waiting in the timer. Um, you can also check like for data, for example. So I see my order ID I just said, I see payment transaction, I see shipment ID and all these kind of things. So that works um, pretty well. And the magic with, for example, with AMQP is pretty cool. And you can see that here. So um, if I go to my AMQP service, I can go to the management console there. I have to sign in again. Okay. And as soon as I'm here, um, I can go to the Rabbit and Q Manager, which is basically set up for me in the background. And there um, you see um, that was actually my message, which just um, was handed in. So let's do it a bit more here. Um, so you can really see that there was an AMQP message sent and received on the um, on the real cloud service there, and I haven't configured anything for that. I just set the 
required for me. Um, Spring Boot, please. Um, yeah, that was basically a very um, easy example. Um, it's available on GitHub, so check it out. Um, it might serve you as an, like a copy and paste template, I hope. If you have feedback, let me know. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. See you another time. Bye.